Smoker Wedding Mart. Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Milmo Wood. Uh, back in the workshop this morning. It's a bit chilly because it's middle of winter here in Wales, in the United Kingdom, uh, but it's beautiful and that's why we like living here. Uh, today I'm going to be making a sign for a personal gym in somebody's house. There's a bit of a jokey twist to it, which we'll get to I'm sure in the video. Uh, I'm using pitch pine that I, I need to resaw, um, and then we're going to be engraving the lettering into the sign. Hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please like it and subscribe and maybe even share it with your friends and try and make my channel grow a little bit. It's only a small channel and I'm a hobbyist, so it'd be great to have people join me. Um, let's get started. need to play that flat now. Good thickness. Um, good fascia. Um, which will be sanded and playing flat. Uh, ready to start bringing the uh, writing on for the sign. Okay, so now we've resawn the wood. Uh, just checking my lettering. Uh, some of these letters repeat in the set that I've got, but there isn't enough to repeat to spell out the whole word. Um, it fits rather nice onto the wood, there's a bit of um, resizing of the wood required. Uh, but first off I'm going to sand it back, bring up the, uh, the natural wood colour of it. So as I've been sanding, uh, I don't know if you can see it at all, there's a split in the wood, just a natural split along the wood. Um, which is quite a nice feature really, but my concern is uh, as the wood ages or dries out in the house, though well, that's going to split. I'm thinking of using a different type of wood, or maybe even putting it off straight. I do have room for the lettering to fit just higher up. Um, not decided yet. It might be that I put bow ties in it just to save it splitting anymore. So I decided to go with the bow tie, keep the, uh, the size of the sign as big as I want it really. Um, I've just roughly cut out some bows and then just need to mark them up on the wood. Remember, I'm just putting the center piece on the crack. What I'm thinking is, they'll actually add a little something to the sign. Because I know the people that I'm making it for love wood, love the natural look. Oop. I think we'll have a bit of a contrast for them. I'm 
if nothing else, it's good practice for me as well. There we go. Unfortunately, I haven't got the route a bit that I would have preferred, so I've got a really narrow one. Um, but it's all I've got at the moment. I've set the router depth so it's slightly less than the uh, bow ties I'm going to use. Let's get router in. So in order to do this I need to keep it inside the lines because obviously when I put the pencil in the mark around the bow tie it's wider than the bow tie. So as I router I'll keep inside the lines. So I've routed, routed out the bulk of it, um, not too bad actually, I don't know if you can see how good that is, just move the camera slightly and all I'll do is I'll tidy that up now with the chisel and get it more accurate until the bow tie fits in. I'm going to do the rest of the other two now. So now I just need to tighten them up with the chisel. So I'll be I'll brought a hammer out. Um, although the chisels are old and some of them are a bit rusty because I don't really use them. This one is a nice sharp one. So I can maybe just do it by hand, but I'm literally just nibbling away. persuasion and rather than just film all this I'm just gonna follow uh, around the sides and get as close a fit as possible um, I'm sure there's going to be some gaps, but I'll show you how I'll fill those in. So, first one done. I'm not going to push her in too far until I, I'm gluing it in. Um, a bit of a gap. Not too concerned. Uh, I'll show you how to fill those in. So when, it's, when I've done all three, a bit wood glue in. Put these on, hammer them down, leave them to set. They should be proud of the wood and we'll just uh, plane them or sand them back and then we'll fill the gaps. Okay, so I've done two out of the three. Um, it didn't take too long, I thought it would have been longer. Just make sure the bottom of that's clean. I think it was worth mentioning that when you go around the outside, and I've not done it perfectly unfortunately, but uh, we'll soon hide that. Always keep the bevel of the chisel on the inside because you want to have a straight wall with the straight edge on the back. I've now got some uh, waterproof, weatherproof uh, glue. Probably doesn't need to use waterproof glue. Cold, so the glue's uh, not running as well as it would do normally. I'm put the glue in each hole. And 
normally use a little brush, but I haven't got a brush to hand. So just make sure when you've got glue up the sides and on the base, covering it. No, I've got the bottom of that one. Clean that up. Okay. So, first proper try on camera. <laughs> I was a bit nervous, I think. They seem okay. I'm going to use a, a rubber, uh, a wooden mallet to drive them home. when in better than I thought. Get rid of some of the squeeze out. There. You can see I've got some gap gapping around. Which isn't ideal. Um, I'm gonna do a little trick which most people will know about, it's nothing special. I've seen people do this in various ways, but this is, tends to be how I do it. Take some of that paste that we've created, squeeze it into those holes, and then just rub some of that off. It will sand off later as well. Just use a bit of a See that? That should clean up quite nicely when it's dry. I'm going to do the same with this, this one, and I'm going to finish plugging uh, the third hole, which I haven't done yet. So all three in place, now drying off. Gaps filled. Need to leave that now until they're dry. So I've just sanded back the uh, bow ties now. They were standing proud. As you can see, they're right back down to the wood. Now we can start thinking about engraving and shaping the uh, sign. So I've now just configured my lettering, or part of the lettering. Um, I've entered the letters into the jig, I've measured the halfway point, so I've measured the whole length of the words, marked the halfway point, Put the halfway point across my sign and then got the equal measurement up from the base and down from the top. It looks so different, that's three and a half centimetres, that's half a centimetre because of this gap here which is three centimetres. So three centimetres plus the half centimetres gets us the equals, three and a half centimetres different. Now all I need to do is set up my router and router the letters out. So with this lettering set there's a particular base that you have to put in on the router and a, a particular type of bush. I've used the centering tool through the bush into the router and then I've secured the fixing screws in place. So we're all ready now to fit the bit. Okay, so I've got my cutter fitted, 
Now all I'm going to do is find zero, so the bush fits inside the lettering and the plate uh, runs along the alloy sides. So take it down, that's a bit proud, so I raise the bit until I find zero, as in it's touching the wood. Should be exactly there. And then I need to take it down to the cut depth. And for that, I'm just gonna lower that. There's going to be mark on the edge. Uh, as you can see there, that's currently on number two. I turn it the right way. There's one, two, three marks, and then lock it off. That should stand proud in the wood now, which it does. And I'm ready to start cutting. Okay, first letter. Make sure you've got a good grip of the router. Wait for the bit to stop. Bring it out. Make sure you're happy with the depth. To be honest, I think I could go a little bit deeper. I'm just going to take it down, put some more. Can wait for the bit to stop. Much better. And then if I just move the camera, I can show you. That's cut on the inside. Now to remove the template, which I stuck down with double-sided tape. And my only concern is where the letters get darker whether I might have to do something to make them stand out as much as they do in the, on the plain side. So what, with this lettering system, you just need to undo two screws on either side to remove this end piece. They're not tightened too much, just pinch tight. And then the letters just slide out. Use that one as a spacer between the words. No, leave the S in. That's the first letter of the other one. And then we just need to set up the lettering for the next word. Now unfortunately I don't have enough of the lettering to do all the word, um, so I'm just going to measure it out, do some calculations, make sure I still use the centre point. I'll do that off camera and come back when it's all set up. As you can see I don't quite have enough letters, so it's San Antonio's. So we've got the San, I'm using an I as a spacer. So what I've done is, so I don't rouse it in error, I've turned it upside down compared to the other letters. Antonio, I haven't got the additional N, so I've used the letter, which is the same width as an N, 
turned it upside down again so I don't router it in there. And then IOS at the end. When I've routed the majority of the letters, I'll come back and reroute the N into it. Measure twice, cut once. Just going to flip it over, clean the dust off, and reapply some fresh double sided press tape. really well. Measure twice, cut once, double checking that it's in the correct place and now we'll look to route to the letters as I did before. As long as I've measured it right, everything will align up. There we go. There is a bell. Just in case you're wondering what sign writing kit I'm using, I'm using the uh, Miles Craft Sign Writer or Sign Crafter. Um, only bought it recently. It does have some limitations because all the lettering is pretty much the same. You've got larger or smaller letters that you can buy. You can adjust the style of the letters by using different router bits when you're cutting. Um, but the advantages are it's really straightforward, nice clean cuts so long as using a good router bit. Um, really clear and, and to be honest very simple to use. Well, you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. So I put the lettering in earlier and I put in San Antonio's Sunshine Gym. And when I rechecked the customer's uh, lettering that she wanted, it's San Antonio, no S on the end. So it took me a while to decide what I was going to do because clearly I can't supply that to the customer. Um, she had requested palm trees on it. So I found a picture of a palm tree and what I've decided to do is I'm gonna raise these rather than cut them into the wood. Uh, so I'm gonna cut the shape out on a scroll saw, put them on the end of the sign. Um, what I have done is cut out with a contrasting piece of wood again circle which can cover the S and what I'm hoping is that it'll look like the Sun on the top so I'll recess the Sun and stick on the scroll saw the palm trees so what I'm gonna do now is cut the hole around the S set in the Sun and then I'll get on to cutting the palm trees where there's a will, there's a way, as we say in the UK. So let me just set that up.
And as with the bow ties, uh, when this is dried, I'm going to mix a bit of wood, sawdust, uh, and glue, and just fill in the gaps around it. Just see what it looks like in place. I think there's a little bit of sanding to be done on the palm trees. Oh yeah. I think that's gonna look brilliant. So now what I want to do is just round the edges off. Um, I'm just looking, no need for a compass or anything, just something suitably round. See what you think of the edge. They use a, a lid or something like that, and we just draw around it. I think I'm going to use the bottom of this aerosol pen. And then I'm just going to trim the edges off and sand back to the pencil mark. And now to sand back to the pencil mark. All nicely rounded now. Sanded. Um, I think I'm gonna put a nice edge on it with the router now. So I've started routering I've picked the Roman OG bit, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, I'm going to take a light pass first and then come into the full cut. And obviously the bearing on the bottom will follow the edge of the wood. I've nearly finished this side now. Always use your router from right to left. If you come from left to right, the router, the way the router spins will jerk the router towards you. Uh, I think we're finished now. Now it's time to position the palm trees. Unfortunately I dropped it and uh, snapped the branch off. But once it's in position with a bit of glue, uh, you won't be able to tell. Before I attach that though, just going to take the front of the sign down to 240 grit sandpaper. So I'm just starting to add a water base finish for the sign to finish it off. Polycrylic uh, Minwax uh, finish. 